it's rare for a community like this to have an art museum at its center, at its heart. And for a hundred years we've been at that heart. It's a special, special place to be because people come in and out through this lens of the arts. They make art, they look at art, they have conversations about art, they hear people talking about art, and they learn what art is in your everyday life, what it can be. The museum opened January 15th of 1914. Two collectors in our town, William T. Evans and Florence Wren Lang, uh, merged their collections uh, into the founding of the museum. One of the museum's signature galleries is the gallery of the artist George Innes. George Innes was one of the uh, most renowned landscape painters of the late 19th century and resided the latter years of his life here in Montclair. And around him formed an artist colony. Other artists came to be by him. From the very beginning of the museum, the idea was that it would be for all the arts. And so it was not just for painting and sculpture, but also for music. I knew early on that I wanted to be an artist, and my parents saw that. So when I was six years old, I attended the Montclair Art Museum School. You know, I was so young and just so taken by the place. It was just this den of creativity, let me say. You know, again, opening my eyes to what art could be. The museum is an enormously creative place. You could open any one of these scrapbooks and find wonderful ideas of how to engage the public, how to get them to come. When people talk about Montclair, they describe it as an artsy town, not only because of the artists who have resided there over the last hundred years, but because of the benefactors, the people who are interested in culture and the arts who have come to live there. Generous individuals have given funds to allow the museum to assemble a collection that's notable on a, on a national scale. The museum has played a very important role in the fact that Montclair means art to the outside world. You know, the museum has always had a strong relationship with the artists and the patrons in this community. It is the reason why we are here and strong a hundred years later. But the heart of the museum has always been its collection. All art is a documentation of what we've gone through as a people. I think there's this real sense when you go to a museum of what can still happen. Museums are places that collect, that hoard, um, the treasures of, of, of our lives and of, of our culture. And so at any given time, only a small percentage of the work is, is on view. And so there are um, climate-controlled vaults. The Native American vault is, is amazing. Uh, just to see the rows and rows of objects and to know that all those objects belong to someone, that there's a history there for each of those objects. The curator's job and the museum's job is to organize exhibitions that take those works out and bring them into public view. So we're entering the American Art Vault. We have over 12,000 objects in the collection. And so this is one of our storage areas, which contains probably about 8,000 objects. This is a space that is pretty much off limits. We give tours from time to time, but there are few and far between. If we were to swap out the collection so everything had installation time, we'd be looking at easily 20, 30 plus years to ensure that everything was shown. We are very lucky to have the curators we have. They are uh, known across the world, really, for the work that they do. 
A curator is really a caretaker, or the, I think the British term is keeper, of first and foremost the permanent collection of the museum. And the curator is also the person who organizes exhibitions. My specialty is early 20th century American modern art. As you go throughout the museum, you will see works with these little red symbols for the centennial. Those 100 works are works that range from the 18th century to the present, and they really chart the whole growth and development of the museum's collection. We have a countdown going on 100 days up to the 100th birthday party on January 15th, 2014. 100 years is a long time, and no single individual can remember back to how it was. Let's see, this is an actual original, not a copy not a copy of the original invitation for 15 January 1914. And I don't know about you, but I get a little frisson when I, you know, just a little tingle when I look at things like this. We are really looking forward to our 100th anniversary celebration and to showing the community what's happening here today. Right now on the lawn we have this fabulous sculpture that Jean Shin, um, an artist from Manhattan, put together and gifted to this community. She did it with pieces of silver or stainless steel flatware from the community. It's hand wrought. Every piece, there's 30,000 pieces of silverware in that object on our lawn. The site for collecting the flatware was at the museum. They reach out to newspapers and newsletters and e-bloth to try to get their community to participate in the project and highlight the work. The viewers of the piece are not just the people who are visiting the museum, but people who are driving or walking. So the unintended audience, the public at large, really gets to see and enjoy the piece. And when the final work is exhibited and the uh, audience who's kind of been involved and known about the project finally sees the work, the experience is really heightened because they have a sense of ownership, a sense of creating, collaborating with the artists. We talk about having set our roots in the community and now we have this great expression of that as well in this metaphorical tree uh, on our lawn. And it's beautiful. Artists are often mirrors to our culture and working with contemporary artists is allowing us to bring in uh, this kind of reflection. With the contemporary programming is more than just the artwork on view. Uh, we also are trying to build an audience for contemporary art. Growing up, I went to a lot of museums. My parents are big art lovers. I think about art as a way for people to both learn and also as a way to kind of help them think about and process their own lives. To be able to put together exhibitions that focus on those ideas and bring that art to a wider public is really exciting. What we are seeing around us is a show called Looking Forward, Gifts from the Patricia A. Bell Collection. Pat Bell is very supportive of women artists, of photographers. She's really interested in societal issues, political issues, and that comes through in the work that she collects. Probably 75% of the works are by women, and it wasn't by design. Whether it's Rachel Perry Welty or Cindy Sherman or Louise Lawler or Sharon Kaur, these works were extraordinary. What makes being in an art museum so special? People are nourished by their activity here in some way or another. Sometimes they're provoked. Sometimes they um, get excited or even concerned about what they might see in a work of art, but mostly that turns into a nourishing activity. Often you come in and it's a meditative activity. That 
sense of a home or warmth uh, is something that needs to be communicated in all the things that the museum does. And so, you know, we often talk about this museum as a community living room. Being at the center of a community like Montclair, which prides itself on its engagement in the arts, on its intellectual activity, on its diversity. What a rare and wonderful thing. And put all of that 12 miles outside of Manhattan, and I think it's like landing in heaven. Our focus now is to make sure that the arts are accessible to everyone, so that people don't feel like they have to live on the hill or go to the country club in order to have access to what goes on here. Um, they can walk in the door. Happy 100th anniversary, Montclair Art Museum. 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 Thank you so much. Happy 100th birthday, Montclair Art Museum. May you help Montclair mean art for the next 100 years.